hello everyone and welcome to the very first podcast for RSLWA. My name is John McCourt, I'm the CEO of RSLWA and with me is the State President Peter Aspinall. Peter, welcome. And uh, what's the thinking behind the, these podcasts? Well, John, we traditionally communicate with our sub-branches and our members by uh, the sub-branch signal, the listening post on a, on a uh, less regular basis, um, we do it via emails and uh, obviously the old snail mail. Um, but of course, younger veterans in particular, but I must say also some of the older veterans are much more used to nowadays um, electronic means of uh, being able to do it. And it was suggested to us that uh, creating a podcast on a regular basis would be uh, the way to uh, help um, take our message out. Well, one of the first things we can talk about, of course, is the advent of uh, Anzac House. Uh, we've just started, but a long way to go. Yes, there is. Um, we had the uh, good fortune for the our patron, the Governor, Kim Beasley, to open Anzac House for us uh, now um, back towards the end of last year. And if you take out the period of Christmas and New Year, it means that Anzac House and, uh, has been operating, and I might say along with the Anzac Club, has been operating now for around about uh, three months or so. Mm. So I guess I'll turn the question back on you and say, well, how is it going? What, what has three months' worth of operation in Anzac House? What has it taught you? What is it leading you to uh, make by way of uh, future decisions? Well, it's been very interesting, and it's been an uh, exercise in uh, just sometimes making it up as you go, but uh, primarily we're now uh, fully occupied. We have um, uh, a full complement of veteran services. That includes a medical floor with a whole range of uh, medical support from GP through to specialist support. Uh, also a mental health facility, which has the three tiers of mental health. You have your, your uh, open arms, which is a DVA unit in terms of mental health support and wellbeing. Uh, clinical psychology and psychiatry. Uh, as well as that, we have our own RSLWA services, including uh, advocacy, um, transition and employment support, and also welfare. So the whole philosophy behind uh, Anzac House Veteran Central is that whatever veteran, whatever the veteran needs, him or her and family, they can virtually get it in a virtual one-stop shop and a real one-stop shop. So they can go there and get a, a range of services uh, supplied to them in one visit. That includes also uh, a dental facility and uh, hearing. So it's, um, it's pretty impressive. I just might uh, give you a little bit of an anecdote. Um, this morning I had the opportunity and the privilege of being with a small group from one of our sub-branches who came through to look through the building. Uh, we went down to the second floor and uh, lo and behold, there was the dentist. Um, so free of charge, he came out and he gave us a lecture on uh, dental health <laughs> and all of the problems and issues, but basically reinforcing exactly what you said, the, uh, the availability of those services to veterans and their families, and uh, particularly for the veterans at no cost because either of a DVA card or Medicare. And that's a good point because uh, whilst we can, um, there are lots of services that are free of charge to veterans themselves, there'll be other services that there is a charge. So what we're going to do in the very near future, certainly we'll be able to articulate on the, on the next uh, podcast is exactly what those services are and the prices that go with those. So while most services for veterans will be free of charge, Certainly the dental stuff and, and other services will have some sort of charges, but we'll, 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 ed we'll educate you that on the, on the next uh, podcast next month. Okay. Well, John, I think that leads us um, from Anzac House to Anzac Day. Um, Anzac Day, as we know, last year was cancelled for uh, COVID-19 reasons. There are restrictions that are still in place. Uh, for Anzac Day this year, both in the Perth metropolitan area, but also affecting our sub-branches. What information have you got that uh, could be conveyed to uh, to our sub-branches? Well, it's very interesting because uh, it, obviously COVID-19 and the implications of it even going into 2021 is a fluid thing. Essentially, what we're planning to do is the full range of services, including uh, dawn service, the march, commemorative service, and importantly, we're keeping from last year, the driveway dawn service is very, very popular. So 
having said that, we will need to comply with whatever limitations, COVID limitations we have at the time. So, uh, and that may or may not include a, a cap on how many people can get to the dawn service. Uh, the march is still planned for, and certainly the commemorative service inside the concert hall. And um, the very, very, very popular um, light up the dawn, which we're calling it this year, which is the driveway dawn service, we're encouraging that to continue because through lots of personal reasons, uh, people may not wish to go or can't go to physical services, but would like to commemorate by standing at the end of their driveway. Very, very popular last year, and we'll do this this year. I might add, John, that Light Up the Dawn is now a national initiative and being promoted. So um, uh, members can expect to see um, promotional material in relation to the Light Up the Dawn. Certainly, and some information about who they can tune into, what radio stations or TV stations to actually get that support. And we have had a lot of queries about, well, if you haven't got a bugle, what do you do with regard to if you want to play the last post? Uh, do your worst in terms of what you can do. Last time, there were many callers and said, well, we haven't got a bugle, but we've got a trumpet or we've got a guitar or we've got a clarinet. Whatever whatever is your best uh, uh, effort, we, it's, all, it's all about everyone coming together, neighbours not knowing or now knowing who their neighbours are. So it's a, it's a great initiative and um, I'm sure that's be a great success yet again. And for sub-branches, I think it's important to uh, emphasise whatever is decided at the local level mm -hmm. is agreed by that particular sub-branch and recognising whatever the limitations might be uh, imposed by their local council or shire council. Absolutely. And I suppose the, uh, the third thing we would like to talk about on this first podcast is uh, a new initiative in terms of real frontline services in terms of contemporary veterans, and that's our new facility up at Gerardale. Yes, uh, that facility um, is actually known, well, contained within the Jaredale uh, area that we have acquired is a facility which is called the Recovery and uh, Reconstruction Veteran uh, Transition Centre. Uh, that's an important initiative that uh, is there for veterans, particularly those with uh, health and uh, um mental issues that they, they need to uh, get some form of respite. And uh, that facility uh, is really there for now uh, evermore because the security of the operation is now guaranteed by RSLWA owning that facility. And the good thing about it is that Recovery and Restoration Centre, it, uh, it's just it's also about well-being. A family can get away for a weekend and just enjoy themselves, or others with particular issues can ha have a place where they can go. They're among friends, they're among others, have a similar experiences in defence and uh, can get the help and support they need and deserve. And I think in a future podcast, we can actually bring some vision and uh, yeah. show what is there and, uh, and the facility that uh, is available. Great. Thanks, Peter. Well, that's the end of our first podcast. And uh, if you have any suggestions about subject matters that you'd like us to raise, please let us know. Thank you very much. <laughs>